simply say this is an issue where we currently have, a, in my judgment, humbly said, we currently have a high school structure that 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 cannot deliver the kind of outcomes that we are talking about here unless it is dramatically and wholesale changed. There is there are we're, we're able to get a, a, a marginal bump in this if we just kept the machine running the way the machine is running right now. And I will tell you that the numbers you saw yesterday are going to be the numbers you're going to see for the next 10 years. The question is, do we have the chutzpah to be able to essentially change the way the machine functions overall so that every kid, every kid in our high schools, every kid in our middle schools looking toward going to our high schools, looking toward a two or four year institution, sees that there is a pathway for them to be able to get that 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 diploma. Um, whether or not they have an emphasis in their life on career technical training or whether they have an emphasis on college going or, or other <coughs> kinds of professional pursuits, the fact of the matter is the current machinery spin rinses and sorts kids in such a way is that only the kids who are automatically know or who have parents who, who know or who have the will to persevere make it through. And that's why the numbers are so, in my judgment, so bad. And so this is going to be a question of, you know, of adults changing the system. This is not about whether these children can do this. These children, can, they'll, they'll, they'll eat 40, 40, 20 alive, to be perfectly honest with you. But they cannot do it through a system that essentially spin rinses and sorts them into categories of smart and dumb. That will simply not fly, and it will be a complete disappointment to spend any money on that system unless we actually think in terms of repairing the whole thing. The whole thing. Uh, I, I will not take up a lot of time. Thank you. Well, Representative Frederick, Thank you're you. loud. Thank you very much, Madam, Madam Chair. I am, I've been involved with this system for quite some time now. Your comment that you just made about how we have sorted kids out and where things are within, within the system you weren't here in Oregon during that time, but we heard the same comments. And this was the same, the, and, and, the, and the change that we, we began a process, uh, a culture that was based around the, um, the what was it called now? The um, Sem in the Cam. <laughs> Certificate. certificate of initial mastery, mastery. certificate of advanced yes. mastery. Um, that was something that came up and we began to work with supposedly to try to avoid this very issue that you're talking about. And it created its own culture of testing that did not really address the issues that we were trying to get to. We wanted to find out what in fact would make kids successful in college and, uh, and, and, and in, in non-college uh, situations but in the, in the workplace. Um, we began a process of, of putting SEM and CAM issues. Uh, these were tests that, that came out uh, that were supposed to address these very issues. They were outcomes that people began to work with. I am uh, now we have core standard, uh, common core standards that um, sound very much like what the SEM and the CAM were about. Um, and I am, f uh, just so that you know, I mean, this is, I'm not trying to be cynical because that, that just assumes that there's a, a mistrust of some form, but I am very skeptical um, because what happened is that we still, we still have this huge graduation rate problem. We have this, we still have these kids who are set, set up to be put into a reject pile for one reason or another. And, and, and I, I applaud the, uh, the effort and certainly the enthusiasm and the energy that you're putting behind this. But I want you to know that uh, for me it's a matter of saying, okay, who's going to be left out again here? Because I've seen this take place. I, this, is, I, I, this is like a, um, a rewind of a movie for me. I, I, I've seen these, the same kind of ideas set up um, that we are going to make these changes and I really worry about that because what happens is there are some folks within the system that decide that the way that you do it is the way that they've always done it. So they will concentrate on, despite the efforts, your best efforts, they will concentrate on that test. They will concentrate on 252 or 
as a number that they have to reach, not whether the kid is actually learning to read and whether the kid likes reading. That's that's the key element for me. So I just I mean I, I I just want you to understand this is why when you hear my comments about these issues, I I'm pl pl playing back these these same comments that I heard and I promoted. I mean this is the other thing for me. I I said we're going to be able to do this, and then I discovered that in fact other things can come into the middle of it that that stop it, and a culture that's already there on testing that. <clears throat> where testing is designed to be setting up a reject pile, not something that we help the kids with. Uh, that's the concern that I have. Thank you very much, Representative Frederick. I, 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 I would tell you that there are two kinds of problems um, associated with doing this work, and probably the same two were true five or ten or twenty years ago when you're trying to do the prior work. And one problem is will, and the other problem is skill. When I said yesterday there's going to be noise, it is because I have no no court, and there's no safe harbor here for people who have the skill to be able to do this, but who choose because the the culture will allow them to choose to abdicate responsibility from educating children who have previously been, been put in the in the in the in the bad pile that you referred to. Now, I, I, I honestly believe that people don't really want to do that. I just think they don't know what else to do. I agree. And so they fundamentally leave the system that designed itself this way, or that was designed this way, they leave it because it's too hard to actually alter that system. I am, I am only here to disturb that system, to be perfectly honest with you. I only came to Oregon to do that. If you know anything about my history, I, I, know, I know a lot about opposed to disturbing things. So that that is what I came to do. I don't mean that in a menacing way. I'm not certainly trying to scare anybody or anything. But I'm just simply saying to you, I was one of those children. Likely, some of you were one of those children. The fact of the matter is, you see greater numbers of those children being produced by the machine we have in place right now. If we want to intercept that behavior, then we are going to have to do something different than what that behavior currently gets us and what it does right now. And so I wouldn't know how to approach this, and I'd have the same degree of cynicism that you would, if what I was essentially getting was the same machine in a different color. That's not what this is. This is essentially saying we are going to have to reform the way the architecture works, the way the incentives work for people who heretofore would be able to move out certain numbers of kids, certain kinds of kids, and they'd still get their ADA for it. You'd, you'd still be paid for those youngsters. You'd still be receiving dollars for those kids, even if, in fact, they left at 10.30 in the morning. That's right. That's a bad incentive. You, we, we have incentivized the wrong behaviors. Now, when you stop doing that, and this takes courage, to be really honest with you, when you stop doing that, then you're going to hear from your constituents who will say, hey, but now I don't get as much money because now I have to keep, I have to actually either keep those kids and educate them, or I can't claim them for having gotten them here for only two hours a day. No, now the option is you have to build a different infrastructure, a different road map, a different methodology of being able to get them to the end game. I am never going to abdicate kids from their of responsibility to be good students. I'm never going to abdicate parents from their responsibility for being good parents. I don't care how poor we are or they are. The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, the piece I'm talking about right now is a third of the mile that is the school or school districts or institutions responsibility. And we can build a different machine than what we have right now if, in fact, we have the will to do that. So all of this work of, out of OEIB right now, all of the things you see here and all these strategic initiatives, the backdrop of them is really the question of whether or not we have the strength and will to do differently that which we have done the same for the last multiple sets of years.